In my 2019 book, Thirst, 2600 Miles to Home, I chronicle my 2013 PCT FKT attempt along the length of the Sierra Nevada and Cascade Mountain Range. Many of you have probably read this story. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And you, those of you who have are aware that it ends in a somewhat uncomfortable place. It ends just after I've set this record, after I've hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in 60 days, an unimaginable feat to me prior to actually doing it. Unimaginable to a lot of people, actually. And yet, I'm in this very negative headspace. I am coping with what is super common amongst almost all through hikers, and it's this period of post-hike depression, um, where you're grieving the loss of this amazing experience on the trail. And beyond that, there's also something deeper. You know, throughout that book, I talk about how I struggled my whole life with, with self-esteem, with self-acceptance, of, of coming to terms with who I am, the fact that, you know, I love being out in the mountains more than anything else, like that, you know, hiking is my life, it's the only thing I want to do, it's more important to me than even relationships, like, I live for the mountains, for being in nature, for traversing these high, beautiful places, often solo, and... You know, following this record, following this incredible experience, I'm not only grieving that loss, you know, having this, this hard period of time of post-hike depression, but I'm also coming to terms with something significant that shifted within myself. You know, by going out there and pursuing this record um, and succeeding at it, doing something bigger than I imagined I was even remotely capable of, I've learned not only to accept this about myself, except that I am different, except that, you know, the mountains are my home. But I've also had to accept that possibly I'm not who I think that I am, but that I'm not really sure. Uh, here I am now, this person who set this record, and and slowly, slowly in the midst of this, this post-hike depression, in the midst of this giant success, I start grappling with something that's incredibly common, and yet I had no idea. I had no idea that this was a thing. It's most commonly referred to as imposter syndrome. Little by little, these little nagging, doubting voices started creeping in, telling me, this was an accident. There's no way you could have done this. It's so outside of the realm of possibility. It's so outside everything you've done before. You know, clearly, this was an accident, and you're an imposter. You're a fake. There's no way that you did this thing. You know, you were just really lucky. And I grappled with that for years. And, you know, a huge part of me believed it. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously this was luck. Like, there's no way. Um, but then there's this other part of me that knew how I felt when I was out there and that, that this was 100% authentic to me to be able to go out and just to, to hike and hike and hike and be my most true self. And so somewhere in there, there was the truth. And whether it was one or the other, or somewhere in between, I needed to know the answer. And so a lot of people might wonder, well, why did you write a second book, Mud Rocks Blazes, Letting Go on the Appalachian Trail? I wrote it because I knew that what I experienced retrospectively now, years later, I know this imposter syndrome, this this juxtaposition of reality with what these internal voices might tell you, this, this possibility that maybe I'm not what I think I am or who I think I am or who people believe I am. This is common and it's a problem. So I wrote Mud Rocks Blazes not only to share the adventure, share the story of the Appalachian Trail FKT that I, I hiked in 2015, but I also wrote it to share with others who may feel like they aren't who everyone thinks that they are, especially high achievers. You know, we're, we're incredibly vulnerable to this, that we're never going to be good enough inside our own heads. And it's simply not true. You know, I wrote Mud Rocks Blazes because I want the world to know that just because you have doubt, just because you, you're not 100% sure, doesn't mean that you're not capable, that you're not enough, and that you aren't a success exactly as you are. So I hope that in addition to enjoying 
a grand adventure in the woods story, the story of my through hike on the Appalachian Trail in 2015, you'll also be able to resonate or know somebody who you can share this message with, with the fact that you're enough, that you're capable, that you are exactly who you're supposed to be. And that's the hope that I have that people will take away from reading my latest book, Mud Rocks Blazes, Letting Go on the Appalachian Trail.